Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gavin, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, I'm not a happy camper today, but I'll tell you why a little bit later. I just, I'm just uh, really out of it. One of the nights I did not feel like doing a show, but, you know, uh, the old show biz axiom, which is the show must go on. And I'd like to find out whoever created that show business axiom could personally, I'd like to beat the living hell out of them. Anyway, uh, I'm Alex Bennett, and uh, as we do, it's time to go check in with an ex-wife. Okay, look at her with that hat. She's become the head of hopper of Gabnet. Yes. <laughs> That's Ronnie Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, 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 yes, uh, she is an ex-wife. That's why she has the name Bennett. Uh, and um, uh, uh, she's um, they've been going through some stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how we how we describe stuff. It's my predicament. Yeah, uh, uh, she's dying, but then again, so are we all. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it is uh, it, it it's it's a situation that I have never been in in my life, being this close to somebody, going through this. Even my best friend who had cancer. Uh, because uh, we were more closely associated, shall we say, than just friends. Me, huh? You and me, you mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we know each other quite a while. Yes. Uh, since, uh, let's see here, since I met you in that car in front of the Old Town Coffee House, in uh, what year was that? Do you remember? 59, probably. Yeah, 1959. I probably know you. I'm trying to think. Do I know you longer? I think I know you longer than anybody I I, I know. Well, it's 60 years ago that we met. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Is it that much? Well, look at it. Look at my hand. I mean, 59, 69, 79, 89, 99, 09, 19. That's 60 years. 60 years. Where did they all go? Yeah, that's always the question, isn't it? At this yeah, time of I mean, life. It just, <laughs> just gone. you know, just gone. Yep. Yeah, uh, it's amazing how, when you're younger, life looks at how long life is, and when you're older, how short it's been. You always think when you're younger. I did when I was young that you have forever. As sixty years sounded like forever when I was twenty. It doesn't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I when I say I'm 79 years old and I suddenly realize that how many people do I know or have I known can say that? You can know, say what? That I'm 79 years old. You know? People I don't live, Huh? I know a lot of people that are older than that. You know people who are older than that. But not people who you grew up with or associates with you. I mean, I have people dying all the time. It's kind of like the common thing. I'll call my business manager, Gary, like I did today and say, guess who died? You know? <laughs> That's what the old people do. <laughs> yeah, guess who died? And, and it's really uh, kind of... Uh, um, it's it's something that becomes a constant in your life. And as my mother used to say, she said, when you're a kid, your prime social uh, uh, thing is going to birthday parties, and when you're old, it's going to funerals. Funerals, yes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, it changes. It's okay. Life changes. And by the way, it's all relative, let me say, because my mother had a friend who was 92 and she died. And my mother said, how can she die? She was so young. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Whenever we discuss the question of when is old on my blog, yeah. you get, depending on the ages of people, nobody is ever old. 
if they're 60, they say 70s are old. If they're 70, they say 80s are old. Yeah. And if they're 80s, they say 90s are old. Nobody is ever old. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, 79, which I am, to me is old. Of course you know? it is. And um, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, by the way, I, while I wish you all a long life, maybe you don't want it to be that long, <laughs> you know? But you don't want it to be so long that eventually you're the only person left in the room. You know, and that's what happened to my mother. All her friends went, and she was still going at 100. Yeah. You know? But who did she have? There was nobody came to visit her anymore. I was surprised that people came to her funeral because I didn't know if there were enough left to make up a funeral. Yeah. Yeah, but um, it gets smaller and smaller, the circle of old friends. Yeah. Yeah, and um, it's it's it, oddly enough, it's not something at least in this society that we celebrate. What age? We don't celebrate it. I mean, American culture dislikes old people. They would like us all to disappear. <laughs> well, we will. <laughs> so they'll get their I mean, wish. The, the, all the politicians in Washington want to take away Social Security, um, which is the most successful social program in the history of the world um they don't want us to work past about age 50 mm -hmm. and uh and that's i think that 50 depending on the kind of career you choose i think that's when you're really getting good really good at your job at age 50 um and they don't want us to work past that um they don't uh want medicare they want to turn that into a private service that um for, for the insurance companies and so on they just don't like old people do you remember when older employees were considered continuity for the company mm -hmm. sure you know i learned from a lot of them wherever on the places i worked yeah and that continuity doesn't exist in companies anymore I mean, they're really... Well, you know, all by themselves. They don't even talk to anybody else. Well, to begin with, they want nothing but young people to work for them because young people work for shit. You know, where an older person wants something for his expertise. Mm-hmm. You know? So, it's I hard. mean, you're right. Old people are, are disdained and hated and reviled and considered uh, a blight on the... On the, on the uh... You know, I've often said to people that... Something happens as we're growing older. You never know when it's going to happen because we age at different rates in each individual. But there comes a day when you don't know that you've done it until someone responds to you, that you have stepped across a line, that you have gone from ordinary midlife person that everybody respects and mm -hmm. all that, and you step across a line and you become an old person. And it happens to men, but more, more than that, it happens to women you become invisible. People don't see you anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's it's a certain look that you get. And the people who are adults who are younger then see those people always as old and therefore either demented or not very bright to begin with or forgot everything they ever knew and don't have anything useful to give to society anymore. That's how American culture treats old people. And thank God for the caregivers that I've discovered now. There are people who are different from you and me and most people we know who devote their whole lives to caring, even young people too. But I run into the ones who are taking care of old people, most, mostly old people mm -hmm. with cancer. And, and they are dedicated. They are amazing people. And they aren't like the rest of us. They have a different, a different kind of heart, a different kind of mindset. And, they, and I just respect and love them so much. But they are the minority. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, you know, I mean, I have found that as I've gotten older, the thing that I guess bothers me the most is I love the work that I did. Mm -hmm. And I love the radio and broadcasting and uh, doing programs. That's why I still do this thing, if nothing more, to keep my chops up. It's not for the tons of people who are listening, you oh, know. Same way with my dog. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I would go out and look for work but nobody will take me seriously you know nobody will take me seriously so i don't want to go through the indignity of going through the 
asking for a job process. Does that make sense? Oh, let me tell you the last time I looked for work before I said enough of this. I had spoken with someone at a web. I've been working on websites for 10 years, running websites. Mm. And I was spoke with someone on the phone who thought that I was really hot shit and wanted to see me right away. Could I be there at their offices at 10 o'clock the next morning to meet hit the person's boss that I had spoken to on the phone? Mm-hmm. So we made the arrangements and I arrived at 10 and I waited and waited and we got to be 1015 and 1020 and 1025. The door to the inner offices opened into the reception room and a couple of people stuck their heads in and looked at me and closed the door. And I waited a little bit longer and then one of them came out, the person I had spoken to on the phone the afternoon before, and apologized and said he was terribly, terribly sorry that someone had forgotten to call me. But that job had been filled between the time that he and I had spoken, which was four in the afternoon the day before. Yeah. Um, And my arriving there at 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. or whatever it was that day. And that's what I said. I can't do this anymore. It's all 27-year-olds who don't want their grandmother working for them. Wow. Wow. (laughs) You know, I mean, I uh, um, the, the thing that I had the last time, the last time, was... I did a replacement gig at uh, WOR here in New York because mm-hmm. they, th- they said, okay, Alex Bendel, we got a guy off on Saturday night or Friday night or whatever. Do your show, do a show, do his show. So I went and did it. And then I had a friend who knew these guys. I didn't hear a word from them after I did it. And um, they did send you a check, I hope. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, contraire. You think they send out checks now? Uh, I'll explain that one in a second. But uh, but that, that's not the point. The point was that finally I asked this friend of mine, would you call them and, and see what they thought? And uh, he called them and they said, oh, he was terrific. He's a real pro. And somehow that didn't sound right to me. You know, uh, a real pro. Yeah, that means I'm old <laughs> right? And uh, I do a great job, but, you know, there's no job here. Mm-hmm. And and I just didn't want to go through that indignity again. I also worked for them a second time, and uh, that was uh, New Year's a couple of years ago. And uh, to this day, I've never gotten a check. Did you call or did you email and ask? Uh, you know something? It was so, it would have been so little because of what they pay in radio stations today, that I didn't bother. I just felt it was up to them to call me and say, where do we send the check? You know, well, not... You decided before they hired you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always thought that you and all radio people were safe as you got older, as long as your voice didn't become right. kind of, you know, that scratchy old thing. Because... Um, because nobody sees you, so they don't like what old people look like. Who knows on radio? So I thought you guys were safe to work for as long as you were capable. Mm-mm. No, no, I, oh, I, I beg to differ with you. Okay, no, uh, I'm just saying, well, obviously, <laughs> I'm not, that's not true. No, but it's know? gotten to the point where I go, you know, maybe I should get up today and see what I can do. You know, it was funny. I was looking at, uh, I, you know, for some reason, I don't know how I got on. What's that site where people go for jobs now? Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, see, that's why I'm yeah, too old that's now. That's why I can't they don't the hire name. you, darling. You know, the, you know, the site where everybody posts their, they, their, their, resumes and uh, there are jobs being offered there well anyway got a thing for them the other day jobs you may be suited for so i looked at it one of them was um head of podcasts at like i don't know stitcher or someplace like that and i was mentioning to my audience i should apply for that and when they try to dismiss me i'll say i invented the fucking podcast (laughs) Which I did. I have proof of it. Uh, I have the program that was written that, in fact, let people download the program every day automatically. It was called Auto Alex. I didn't write it. Another guy wrote it. But the concept was what is now podcasts. 
And, and I would love to be able to just go in there and have them dismiss me and then have me look at them and go, you know, I invented the podcast. But they won't hear you. There's no you know, point. There's really no point. You can't do that um, because it, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it just makes you, in their eyes, look foolish, old and foolish. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I, was, I there was this uh, new podcast, uh, ju- uh, podcast industry journal, I don't know what it's called, and uh, they wrote an article about the first podcast and so on and so forth. So I wrote the guy and I said, you're wrong. He said, well, You're uh, not going to uh, give up on this. You're going to do the whole show about this, right? No, I'm not going to do the whole show about it, but I'm giving you an example of how you get dismissed. I mean, this guy went, oh, well, somebody did it in 1990. And I said, I was doing it four years earlier than you mentioned the first Let one. Let it go, Alex. Let it go. Why? You're becoming a, 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 you know, a get off my lawn kind of old man. All right. So get off my fucking lawn. <laughs> get off my podcast lawn. <laughs> I'm so, I'm just sorry we never trademarked the, or not trademarked, but copyright the program. Because uh, we probably would be worth a fortune today, you know, as a result of it. But I'm not claiming anything except, hey, you know, I would like a little bit of, uh, I don't I do, you know. Alex, nobody cares. I know nobody cares. Nobody. So, so in other words, I've yet hit another stone wall of being old, right? No, it's, you know, that when I was working... As the first managing editor at CBSNews.com, yeah, uh, nobody had ever done a news website before. CNN was building theirs at the same time we were at CBS, right? And nobody knew how to present this stuff online. Nobody had ever done it before. We were inventing it, mm-hmm. and I would steal things from CNN. They would check our site, and they would steal things from us. And it was, you know, a consensus was slowly building of how to lay things out to make it easy to read and for people to use. And I invented some of those things. I don't even remember what they are. It doesn't matter. Well, I'll tell you something. I mean, you do it every day. That You, you figure out a new way to lay out a, a, a video or a new way uh, to post photos. Um it, 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 there are all kinds of tiny little things that help make it easier for people to use your website. Mm-hmm. And you work at them every day and you keep refining them. Mostly it's refining. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, I just, I just get, guess I just want a little bit of, of um, oh, as somebody to say, hey, now this, this guy really came up with the first idea of this, you know. And I don't know. It's just me. I, When you get old, all you've got are memories, for crying out loud. All you've got is who you are and what you did. And I'd like to think that I did a couple of things which were innovative and to this day last. But I'll tell you what I hate about the podcast. It's been co-opted by the corporations now. But everything is. Don't get upset about that. Everything that is useful and that is capable of making money will be. It's the way the system works. You know, I mean, the biggest podcast in the country, I think, is something that has to do with NPR. You know, and and uh, you know, uh, when I read about it, it's this company is c- combining with that company, and they're doing a podcast, and I'm turning on the TV, and there's some person saying, "I'm doing a podcast now." Uh, yeah, <laughs> so to me, the but, podcast but, but, was but, the lowest form of show business. Alex, that huh? is what radio has become: our podcasts. Mm-hmm. And it's better service than radio was. Is it? Yes. Is it? Yes. Well, there's no vetting. You know, where with radio stations, you had to back up what you were saying. Oh, please. Oh, I did. I always had to. No, please. But nobody was checking ever unless you told a whopper. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, and they didn't care. Um, it's it's because you can you can listen to podcasts anytime anywhere you want. Mm. Radio, if you don't have it, you know, in something that's stuck in your ear or in your car or wherever you're going, you have to be there where the radio is, or you did in the old days. Now you can subscribe to them; they download automatically onto mm-hmm. your computer. You mm-hmm. can put them on your whatever you're using to listen to them with, 
and it's just so much there's so much more uh, availability I mean you can do it you can listen in, in so many ways that you want yeah well uh, that's very nice but you know there was something about radio that made it different than that and uh, made it different in a very good way it was perishable when you did something it happened at that moment and then it went into the air and that was it and maybe there was something and nice isn't about, that irritating when you want to listen to it again no, no but isn't that a kind of precious in its own way it's like you know it's it's something that it's an art that is perishable Whereas podcasts aren't an art that is perishable. Does that make sense? No, oh, not to me. Yeah, it does to me. I'm glad to have it there because, you know, people learn in two main ways. Mm -hmm. We're divided in that way. Yeah. Some people learn best through their ears. That's the smaller group. Well, that's me. And the larger group learns through their eyes, through reading. Mm -hmm. and, and so listening to it, I'm always, I never have all the information I want that... You know, on, when I'm reading on a page, I can highlight mm -hmm. or I can scribble notes on the side or on a notebook or something. And when you only listen to it, I, listening takes so much time compared to reading. Reading is so much faster. And so if you want to listen to the podcast and get the sense of the conversation and what people are doing, it's perfectly fine. But I'm, in my case, who learn mainly from reading, I don't get everything the first time around. So I would have to listen again which I don't have the patience for mm -hmm. uh, because it just takes so long to listen as opposed to read the same words. What podcast do you listen to? Uh, right now I haven't for several weeks. I haven't, I just don't have the time. What, what did you? I don't remember Alex, whatever okay. turned up, what I downloaded. Oh, okay. I all right. Remember. All right. Because some people do have regular podcasts. They yes, listen they to. do. Yeah. I don't. And that's okay. By the way, there's a lot of things everybody else does online that I don't do. One of them is read Twitter. I've never, ever read Twitter. Um, I do my best to stay away from Facebook, although I distribute the blog on there. So I have to check it once in a while, but I don't do anything about Facebook. Um, I do not, I don't tweet. I don't, what do you call that? Instant message or something you do with it, you know, I, I can't remember what Instagram. it's called. Instagram? Text, texting, texting, texting. I don't do that, no. I absolutely refuse. And I don't have to, I'm dying. What do I care? <laughs> Here's my text. I'm dying. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I often thought about whether I can text you, and then I'd never realize that I can't. I don't really have a text. You know, I can f put a text to your phone number, but it probably won't come up, will it? Sure, it will. Oh, and well. I just, I just erase them. No, oh, okay. I, right. <laughs> I actually have gotten into texting lately. Once I realized that I could dictate my text rather than have to type them out, so. Um, I have enough time on screen, on my main screen, this one. Yeah, I don't need well, any other screens. I used to ask the question about texting, okay? You text to what? You text to a phone number. Right. All right? So yeah. if you're texting to a phone number, why don't you just push ring? <laughs> you know, call. Uh, but you well, don't. That's what old people like me mostly do. Yeah. I talk to, whether it's Skype or just on a telephone, that's how I talk to friends. Um, I don't see the point. Unless I'm on my way to your house and there's a, an automobile accident and maybe I'll text, hey, I'm going to be late. I'm stuck in traffic. Beyond that, I can't think of what I would ever text anybody. Well, um, I don't uh, have anything to say. That I, I pro brought this up to a younger person and I said, why don't you just, instead of texting, just call the number that you're texting to and talk to the actual person? And their answer was, Sometimes you don't want to talk to people. You don't want to get into an engaged conversation. This way, you just make your point and you go. However, there's another problem with texting. And maybe this is me as an old person and I can't get used to it. But here is the big question, okay? Uh, <coughs> when do you end your text? So somebody says blah, 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 blah. And then you have to kind of let them know you got it and you go, thank you. And then do you write back, you're welcome, <laughs> you know, where does the text end? Listen, that's very interesting that you brought that up. I've realized that on the telephone lately in the past few months, none of us know how to say goodbye on the telephone anymore. When we're done talking, the conversation goes something like that. Okay, I'm going to go make breakfast now. Great talking to you, Ronnie. Really loved hearing your voice. 
yeah, me too. We should do this again in a week. Um, I'm going to go now. Love you a lot. And the other person says, love you a lot. And nobody ever gets to goodbye. It goes on and on like that. And we've forgotten how to just say plain old, goodbye, talk to you later, and hang up. <laughs> it's very funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I just don't see the point and and that amount of time on screens and doing things on screens. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got an awful lot of other things I need to get done in the time I've got, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it sure changes the way you do stuff, doesn't it? Well, it changes what's important. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, you know, and by the way, every time texting has come up on my blog, which is, you know, my audience is almost entirely old people, um, the people who text a lot always defend it by saying that, that they wouldn't be able to contact their grandchildren without texting, that the kids wouldn't respond to anything else. Right. right. Really? Really? We teach kids to say please and thank you. We could, we could also teach them to answer the phone and say, hi, Grandma. <laughs> hey, look, I just looked at the clock. We've run out of time. What Already? Did, my, how time flies when you're... Having, and all we did was see, ditch, and, ditch, and, ditch. And you said before we started, gee, you're going to have to carry this one, Alex. I don't know if I've got the strength. Yeah, bullshit. Yeah, uh, well, and all we did was complain the and, whole time. And all we did was complain. I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks, okay? All right, take care, darling. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. And here we are. I, I'm just doing something here. I just you, 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 uh, I, I was working on something, and I uh, oh, there we go. Just found it. Okay, there we go. Okay, I had to fix something here. Uh huh. I'm always fixing something. <laughs> yeah. Boring, isn't it? Yeah, it really is boring. Anyway, uh, let me see. Let me close a few things down here and open a few things up. I guess we're going to talk uh, to our um, our um, uh, people out there. Um, you know, um, and do uh, our um, uh, uh, little show here where we talk with people, and uh, we just need you to give us a call. Uh, I uh, I'm just not in a very good mood tonight. Uh, I I had the most vile experience at a dental office today that I've ever had, uh, and I uh, I really I don't want to talk about it. I just I just don't want to talk about it. But it was vile, and uh, it may wind up costing me three thousand dollars. I don't know. You know, it may not. I'll find out in the next. 24 to 48 hours. I mean, it was not what I considered. God, you know, when, you, when you're a dentist, there's something that goes along with being a dentist. And, and that is keeping people comfortable. You know, this is probably one of the biggest, most fearful things that people do is going to a dentist. And uh, I... Um, uh, uh, I think that dentists, if they're good, do everything they can to put you in a proper frame of mind so that this horrible process goes by much easier and much nicer. And I've had some great dentists in my time. I've had ones that have just, for some reason, they just, you know, they just made me feel good about it. And I didn't feel horrible and all depressed and everything. But uh, today, I went and came out of a dental situation and was not happy. And I had been miserable all day. I didn't talk to girlfriend tonight. I just sat in the guest room really doing nothing. Uh, so depressed about it. And, and waiting to see if I'll have to spend $3,000. Yeah, I, I, don't, I really don't even want to talk about it. So anyway, we're, it, call me, will you? We're, we don't even have any callers. We don't, we don't have any listeners. I, why do I do this thing anyway? I have no idea. Anyway, you know what I forgot to ask Ronnie about, and I'll have to do it next time, is she went through a process to help her deal with death. 
Uh, and uh, I didn't ask her about it because we completely forgotten about it because she did it like four weeks ago, and then the week I did it, she didn't want to get into it uh, yet because she was going to write about it, and then she wrote about it. There we go. And, uh, you know, so anyway, uh, here's Phil. Take over, Phil. You know. Hey, I saw you open the lines. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and... Uh... Did you start uh, rewiring your computer? Uh, rewiring the computer? No, I have almost gotten all, all of this rewired. All it needs to do is be put in. Uh, I've got oh. I, I got everything ready to go here, but you know I don't want to do it till the weekend. Well, I, I understand. And even, uh, I uh, yeah. I've got a I've got a hundred zip ties. <laughs> 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 and waiting for me to go underneath this uh, rat's nest. Yeah, well, I didn't. Uh, I didn't do that. Um, yeah. No, because you know, I've I've found that when you do that, the problem is here's what the problem is with wiring. Uh, yeah. You can buy a six foot wire. You can buy a three foot wire. You can buy a twenty four foot wire. You can buy a two one foot wire. Yeah, but no, uh, you're always going to have some wires that are longer than others. So when you tie them yeah. up, they're still going to be flaying all over the place. That's true. Uh, uh, what I did, uh, and I wish I could show you. I, I don't know if I have the ability to show people, but let me see if I can do it to uh, some extent here. Hold on. Uh huh. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, uh, oh. but uh, here. Grab them all. Well, some of them. See all this? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, that's the stuff that I that I uh, pulled out it, from the uh, from really. The, uh, from it the it wasn't going anywhere. Huh? huh? It wasn't going anywhere. Uh, wait a minute. I, uh, I can't hear you because I've got to oh, oh. my earphone. Put on my yeah. earphones. Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, so all of that wire was uh, dead. It wasn't going anywhere. Some of it wasn't. Some of it was. Uh, yeah. But uh, a lot of the boxes, uh, you know, I went out, I spent almost $100 on boxes and things like that, which I can nary afford. But I got a, I got a couple of USB strips. Uh, one has, mm -hmm. one has uh, seven things on it and then two that supply a, a really fast charge for electrical current yeah and then another one that has i think it's 12 usb ports on it that i wow. but i don't know if i need that one i've cleaned everything up so much i didn't need that as many as i thought i needed you know so. well you know if you if you make up some sort of a block where uh you can just plug in as needed sometimes you find oh well i want to i want to plug in this device yeah that's and, what i'm thinking you know, you of doing plug it in you take it out that's what I'm thinking about doing. It's almost like a wall socket. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I bought. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. And this one was. Uh, this was. This was pretty expensive, actually. Uh, yeah. Is I'm sick and tired. Part of the biggest problem is I have more things plugged in here than you can possibly imagine. All right. Yeah. So um, I got this. Uh, That's a I, nice one. Yeah. I, and I. Uh, I would uh, probably. If I could afford it, I would buy like ten of these, five of these things, uh, and um, get well, them going. Your, your show, wall I'll plug may not be able to handle it. No, no, it's handling all the other stuff. This is oh, just so yeah. that they'll all be in one place. So you have like, you know, the biggest problem they've got with uh, these plug with these uh, what do you call it? What do they call these things? Uh, yeah. <laughs> They're not really meant to be surge suppressors as much as they're meant to, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're yeah. Well, th th that's kind of what I got. I got something very similar to that, but you, yours only has, what, four on each side, uh, right? No, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, okay, you got pretty much the same thing I Twelve. have here. Twelve. Well, yeah, but you have the same thing I have here. And what it yeah. is, is that when you, when you get the plug, uh, you know, the, the plug, the electrical strips, okay? Yeah. And then you start plugging in these little blocks they make, you can only get yeah. like three of them in one or maybe even two and that's it, right? I, so I here, 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 here you've got room, now. here you've got room for that. 
Okay. I have one that's round and the things rotate so you can move yes, them yeah. out of the way of the uh, other plugs. Yeah, I've seen those too. But then, so you've got the, for the big plugs, you've got six of these. And then you've mm -hmm. got uh, another six for the smaller plugs down the middle. So you can put yeah. 12 plugs with the big ones on this. Right. And so that's why I bought that. But I, now I, oh, don't have a, I don't have any place to put it yet. So I have <laughs> you'll to. find it. Hey, um, you yeah. know, I, I was listening to, uh, uh, to you and uh, Ronnie, mm -hmm. and you said that uh, WOR didn't pay you. Mm -hmm. So I called them, and I said, how could you not pay Alex Bennett for his time? Yeah. And they said, well, he got on the air, and he just kept yelling, get off my lawn. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> they didn't know that you wanted to get paid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you why I never called him about it. I mean, to begin with, the money you get these days for working a shift at a radio station is so small that it's, you know, it's uh, it's pissing money. Well, All right? you can do it like the dry cleaners do. They take the $5 bill and they hang it on the wall. I, I <laughs> Look, here's what I used to get. When I used to work for WOR and I would do a shift at the OR, I uh -huh. think they paid me, if I'm not mistaken, $150 an hour. It might have been $300, but they were paying me at least $150 an hour. By the yeah. time I got to the new WOR, I think they were paying something like $30 an hour. So if I worked a three-hour shift, what are we talking about? We're talking about 90 bucks. If yeah. they can't call me and say, where do we send the check, I don't know if I'm if it isn't, doesn't make a better story now to say how cheap these assholes were oh, than yeah. to take the 90 I, you, bucks, you know? You've got $90 worth of stories out of this over the years. And then, then I worked for them a second time. That's how stupid I am, right? I worked yeah. for them, that's, I would tell much I wanted to be back on radio. And uh, I, uh, uh, I figured, well, this time they'll probably just send me a check, right? No, no, never heard from them. Not even a thank you for doing the show, by the way. Yeah, you know, wow. you know, if you if you're gonna if you're gonna fuck me in the ass, at least do a reach around for crying out loud. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, um, hey, Jeff. Yeah, and hello, hey, hello to Charles Wallace who's joining us. But anyway, the thing is about about rewiring things. So I I, I cleared out a lot of wires. I cleared out a lot of the clutter, but it's still you know it's still gonna. Be, and I think I can just fit the machine right here. Uh, uh, over to the uh, right here. It might even show. You're rarely, you're rarely going to turn it off. So you might as well just put it behind the monitor or out of the way. And, no, I'm just going to uh, put it over here in the corner. Yeah. In the corner. Yeah. And it might block a little bit of part of this. Uh, eh, it probably won't. I'll probably still be able to see around. And uh, it's where it's where the lamp is right now. Yeah. Um, you know, so. Uh, uh, I'll put it there. It's only it's only six inches, six point six inches in, in diameter. In diameter, it's only this big in diameter. Yeah, so I think it's it'll, about a foot high. So I think it'll fit there very nicely. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe eleven inches high. And it doesn't make any noise, so I don't have to worry about it whirring. In fact, there'd probably be less noise than there is now. This old. Mat. Have you ever thought about? Sticking your finger in the top to see if there's a fan that runs around. <laughs> no, uh, there yeah. is, there is a. Uh, I don't know if there, there is a there is a blower of some sort because I listened in. I list, put yeah. my ear down there and you can hear a whisper fan going. Yeah. But it uh, it uh, there's not much to get hot in there except for a power supply. You yeah. Know? Hmm. Well, no, I mean there is something to get hot in there. Uh, yeah, it's, in, it's, in it's mine, mine's warm. No, my, the re reason mine is warm. Do you know the reason why? For instance, you probably have three point chips in there and so on for yours. Why, uh, I'm why, not sure. And they go up to like three point five or whatever. But in I mine it's only two point six. Why? Oh I have I have three yeah. I have um I have six core. Uh, yeah. let me look. No, but they're I, but, I can... but they're like six three point oh, three point three, something like that. Uh, three point five. Three point five. Mine are only two point seven. You know why? But you got a twelve. Well, to begin with, I got a 12, and that's yeah. 12 times 2.7, which is a lot, okay? Yeah. But th if you had the 3.5s in there, it would get too hot. Uh, and that's why they make them 2.7, so, you know. Yeah. 
Um, I'm looking here. It's uh, three point five six core. Yeah. Now, I'm hoping Z9 with all the move, with all the moving and stuff that I've done, that I it will fit nicely here without me. You know, I mean, uh, you're right. I don't have to do anything to it once I've got all the plugs in it. I'm good to go. You know. Yeah. So um, we'll just we'll see. We'll see if it fits. Okay. Uh, I think it will. It's going to take up about the same amount of space that the lamp does, only it's going to be further back. And yeah. you don't even see the lamp now. So, uh, Have you felt like throwing any pieces of paper in the top? Uh, you know, well, uh, it is my, there's a reason they call it the garbage can. Uh, my, my remote PC, it's, it's listed as uh, Alex's uh, tr a trash can. Uh, 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 and, it, and it is. It looks like a trash can. It's... Uh, <laughs> It, it, yeah, it's, but it's I've been using it for a couple of weeks now, setting it up so it kind of is almost the same as what I've got here, yeah. and um, there were a few problems I had that I had to change. Uh, huh? There, because, Sorry, I'm talking to myself. Okay. Because there were certain there were certain things that 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 worked fine uh, with this one, but do not work well with the <clears> other. <throat> one is my is a torrent program. For downloading mm -hmm. torrents, uh, called uh, uh, I think it's called uTorrent, right? Yeah, that's what it's called. Um, uh, and um, I use it on this machine; it works fine. But when I try well, it on, you know, the, on the other machine, it does not work well at all. They're doing you a favor. Hmm. Don't put the torrents on this machine. Keep this machine clean, and uh, you know, put them on that other one that uh, is, is a little what, bit what slower. Mean, what but you put them. And something clean. I don't. Oh. To begin with, I am not putting anything on that flash drive. I've only yeah. got about one, uh, 150 <clears throat> uh, gigs on it right now, and probably uh, everything else that I store that uh, re that records. If I record something, it records it on one of my extended drives, which are yeah. very fast with the 3.0. That's why I had to get get these new things because all my old uh, USB switchers were 2.0 2, yeah you know so uh, uh, you know i've got all my drives plugged directly in uh i'm not running it through a block what do you mean you're not running it through a block i, I you so, know you know what i've got what i got i bought the seagates that are yeah. eight eight gigabytes each yeah oh, eight terabytes each split them up into two drives basically four terabytes each Okay, yeah. and then and the they have a USB two USB ports on the front of each one of them, so I just link them all together. And that's uh, okay, it, you know. So yeah, so you're daisy chaining, but yeah, you, I I don't plug it into the USB um, uh, uh, hub. Uh, I plug the drives directly into the computer. Well, if but I've got a lot more than you have that I've got yeah. to deal with. I've got uh, three, four, five maybe different things. So if I'm using those as the hubs from yeah. each other, I'm just linking them through each other. They're working as hubs. Yeah, yeah they'll work just fine. Yeah, yeah. And, and the 3.0 is speedy as hell. I can't tell the difference between that and my internals in my uh, in my machine here. Hello there. Uh, we got a couple of more people here. Got Kevin who joined us. And uh, we've got, oops, uh, well, I made him big picture now, Josh Wheeler, and there's Charles Wallace, and there's Brian Ludwig, and there's Kevin. And uh, let me just, I got I to gotta change the size of my, uh, of my picture here so that, you know, we're, uh, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, there we go. Anyway, where are we? So, um but uh, so that I uh, all weekend long I was clearing cleaning stuff out and I got those big pile of wires and boxes and everything it made me feel good you know I mean even if I didn't move everything in here but I want to move it in here because it works so fast it is so speedy um, you know um, and then it'll also work now, uh, my other monitors only are 1080 monitors uh, these are much larger i can put a lot more on them so i can make the pictures smaller it's going to be better when once i move it in here. yeah uh did you get a anything to digitize those photos so that you can scan them and and digitize them did you get one no, of those we're, we're actually so far we've sent out to have them done oh you, you know if, we, if yeah if we did them if if we did them they would take 
uh, it would take forever. I mean, there are there are very inexpensive things you can buy that will do the process for you, and you, you know, but you're going to have to do them one at a time. And if you send them out, yeah, they charge you, buck maybe a buck uh, a picture, and maybe we got ten thousand pictures, but at least somebody's doing it, you know. Yeah. And it's a yeah. you know quality houses and so on. So, and uh, you know I'm I I, I really I got to be honest with you I don't know what I can do with these pictures. Uh, I I have to see a larger amount of them. I have the midnight some of the ones that were done at midnight blue and they're interesting, but they're, they're still there are only a few that are special. You know, yeah. and uh, uh, if people don't know what I'm talking about, a friend of mine died a while back. And she left me, me and another guy, her entire art, her entire photographic collection, which has in a lot of kind of a few very interesting pieces. I mean, we have a, I have a great picture of uh, Harvey Firestein in drag, you know, in the days when he did that for a living. Uh, but uh, uh, and, and I've got pictures of um, you know a lot of a lot of the porno people at the times. It's kind of a capture of a certain period of time, but I just don't know how extensive that is because I went through a lot of the other stuff and it's like pictures of somebody's puppy, you know. And so yeah. I mean, when you send everything out to get done, some of what comes back is just you know, and you wonder, well, how much is there here that really? makes a life's work really worth it and there are several you, you can always uh make a um like a a, a book uh what do they call it a, a cocktail table top well book. that's what i thought about i mean i've got and the then book. donate one of them to the uh uh what is that government uh library that uh the library of congress yeah and uh, this way, it's you know, it's on file, and her work is is preserved. Well, library, well no, it, what what I want to do is was have a, a tabletop cocktail tabletop book of yeah. her work, but I've got to see that there's enough work of, of that's interesting. I mean, I know what she shot, and I and uh, oddly enough, a lot of it for Midnight Blue has me in there with a camera, you know, <laughs> which I might actually crop it out. You know, I could probably do a documentary about me and Midnight Blue using the still photos she took of me. Well, you maybe know. that's what you should do. Maybe that's uh, what I and, need to and do. And give her the photo credit. Well, yeah, or give her a talk about <laughs> her photography and that she was always behind me taking pictures, mm -hmm. you know. But anyway, it, it, so we got this photographic collection, and it's pretty extensive, but I just don't know if you take the whole thing and put it together. If if there's a cohesive work of body of work there, you know, yeah. I mean, w what happens is in their lifetime, photographers take what's good and they put it over in this pile, and they take what's bad and it goes over in that pile. Well, she never made this pile and that pile, and so we yeah. got to make our own piles. And I don't know that once we say this is good, this is good, this is good, this is good, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. That the bad pile isn't going to be like this, and we're going to have this is going to be the good pile, you know. So, well, that may be all you have. It you could know. be, could well be, you oh. know. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, so I might have to spend three thousand dollars with a dentist. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean between uh, you, need, you need another uh, implant. I, I may need a, no a root canal and a and a crown, uh, but I don't uh, want to talk. There, about there's it. a there's a woman. Really good looking in Dubai that'll give you half off. Yeah, right. But no Novocaine. Right, right. <laughs> it, no, but I mean, I just, uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to really go into it. But I mean, I will know in about forty-eight hours if I need a, a, a root canal uh, because yeah. she filled the tooth and now she's waiting to see. Well, you know what she did? She filled the tooth so we can wait and see if it hurts at the end of forty-eight hours. If it doesn't bother me after forty-eight hours, it's okay. It was really close to the nerve, what she had to do, okay? Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I just gave her a credit card today for $425. If I get a toothache, does she give me the 425 bucks back? No, that's, it was called taking the shot. <laughs> well, you know? That's the Mercedes payment. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, I, but I mean, I just, but I'm hoping that I won't have a bad tooth and it'll be fine, you know, 
Fingers but, crossed. Uh, huh? Fingers crossed, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do have insurance, okay, which covers $2,500 of it. Uh, but 50, it, 50? It, it, well, no, actually, it's with for a root canal, something like 75%, as, as and a crown, 75%. So Such a good deal, I'd get the root canal anyway. So, But I still have to put out, like, maybe 750 bucks, you know. Yeah. And, and I'll, it'll be under the 2,500 cap. But uh, who knows? It's better than six grand that you spent for the in, uh, the uh, implant. But it was just, it was the whole experience today that kind of just put me off after I was through with it. To begin with, a, a um, okay, a, uh, uh, an assistant, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the, hygienist. The hygienist or, uh, or whatever, the person who yeah. helps her, who tried to take an x-ray of my mouth and somehow couldn't get the thing in my mouth without hurting me. You know, it was like jabbing into the bottom part of, you know, and I'm going. How, I, in some had, places you pay extra you know, for that. Have you done this before? You know, this can't be the first time you've done this, or is this your first day on the job? You know, but I mean, it was so incompetent, I couldn't believe it, you know, and, and, all I'm saying is when you go to a dentist, one of the things that dentist should do is give you a certain feeling of confidence of, uh, of uh, hey, they're there, everything's going to be okay, take it easy, you know. Uh, you know, once a Novocaine gets in you, they can do anything they want to do. So they were using film? No, they were, no, they were, but they, but they. My dentist got some of the no, thing that I, I bite know, on, it's I digital. Know, I know, it's digital yeah. now. But still, yeah. it may be worse than those pieces of film they used to stick in your mouth. Remember when they put the yeah. film in your mouth and you had to hold it? Yeah, the with the paper wings. Yeah, but these things, these are thick. Yeah. And so she's got to put it in behind the tooth. And then she got it wrong. The picture sucked. They had to take it again. And my doctor decided she would tempt fate and stayed in the room and held the thing in my mouth <laughs> when it went off. You know how everybody, when they were take, they take the x-ray, everybody not only leaves the room but moves to Omaha till the, mm -hmm. the, the sound of the, and then they come back. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, she said to me, well, you know, the x-rays on this, uh, the radiation on these is really quite minor compared to for digital compared to what they yeah. were with the film. So, you know. And the nice thing is they can overlay it over the old ones and see what the changes are. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, oh, yeah. by the way, you know how much that part cost me? Uh, $200. Is it taking the one film and the. Oh, and, one film, and, 75 bucks. And inspecting the problem. Was a hundred would have been thirty seven. Was a hundred hundred and thirty dollars. I was going to say one hundred fifty. So yeah. yeah, yeah. But then on top of that, then the putting doing the filling was another whatever. Came to four four twenty five. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, I'll see some Universal of that. Universal huh? dental care. Universal dental hey, care for all. We need that. I mean, this is and this is getting ridiculous. You know, I mean, um, here, here's my question. Uh, uh, three thousand dollars between uh, 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 what do you call it, a root canal, and then the crown to go on top of it because it's a small little tooth and it needs the support. It probably will be cheaper for the crown because it is small. Uh, but let's say it comes to three thousand dollars. Let's just say that for another two thousand dollars, I can have an implant. And yeah. they cover most of that, I think. It, it, no, I don't no, think they so. won't cover implants. No. I oh, I thought I thought it was a surgery or something that they they say they cover most of that on Medicare. No, but well, here's what I found out from my dentist today because I told her I had new dental I, that I was getting through SAG after, him. and she says, "Oh, well, that's a very good plan." She says, "I know because I've had some people who come to me who are actors, and they belong to SAG and they have the SAG." dental plan and that the dental plan that they had usually did not cover veneers but sag said we won't take anybody as our dental plan that won't do veneers because our actors need veneers so they 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 cover veneers 
So. Nice. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I, I could do all that if I didn't have to blow my whole year's worth of money on just one fucking tooth. Well, yeah, yeah, try, put, try putting uh, braces on a 14-year-old. You're screwed. Oh, yeah. uh, I've uh, done that twice. Six grand. Oh, boy. Jesus well, I, 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 um, um, uh, so, I mean, I just, I was, didn't even, I came home. I didn't want to talk to girlfriend. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I was just so put off by the experience. Did uh, they give you gas? No. Are you kidding? Oh, me? you got ripped off. You know what she said? I don't do gas because at uh, your age, it ruins brain cells. I said, at my age, I don't give a fucking <laughs> piece of shit. Use them. Uh, <laughs> give me enough gas so I lose everything and I don't have to put up with any of this shit, especially <laughs> this appointment with the dentist. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Because I'm, I'm exactly the same way, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I how is Bree doing? Yeah. Uh, he, well, listen to Bree. Yes, yeah. Bree. Go ahead, Bree. Yeah, Bree. I'm just saying we're in the same boat, Alex. Yeah. Although you're paying a little bit more than I am. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I mean, I, and I'm at a point where I, I don't have that much money. You know, I mean, I, I don't like to blow a couple of thousand on a tooth. You know. Yeah. It's just not my idea of a good time. Although, I mean, I have enough money to probably take care of me for the rest of my life, and I probably should think about who I'm going to leave it to if I go after girlfriend. We're, we're leave me enough for a new tooth. Oh, okay. I will. Sure. <laughs> But you know, I mean, I, 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 once I start digging into my, uh, you know, four hundred one ks and my, uh, and my, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's the company I'm with? Uh, one that starts with a V. Vanguard. Uh, I've got some money to take care of me. It'll as take as me long as your years. rent, as long as your case never goes to court, yeah. and and the rent is set at zero, yeah. uh, you can go a lot further. Well, you got to uh, remember, we got one other thing going that we don't even think about, and that yeah. is her uh, uh, her condo, her yeah. apartment here in New York, which she owes, I don't know, I don't know, not a lot on it anymore. Yeah. Um, and when she, I think she, I don't know what she got it for, somewhere around one hundred twenty five, hundred fifty thousand dollars, and now it will, it'll easily fetch four hundred thousand. Well, it's not just the fetching the four hundred thousand; it's the three grand a month rent. No, yeah. she's only charging like two. Well, it's time to up the rent. Yeah, throw but, uh, those people out of there. I'm Learn from Donald Trump. Th if we needed that money, that money would take care of us for the rest of our lives. Yeah. You know. So, uh, but I, I, it just, I, you know, I remember when I first went to my first dentist and got my first fillings and stuff like that. And what did he charge? He charged. Five dollars a surface, I think it was. Do you remember those days, Jeff? Well, first of all, the first thing is when you went to see the dentist. That's all. That was just the dentist. The dentist. There was nobody else. Yeah, yeah. Right. There was no assistance. And, and there wasn't the, people. He the, did everything himself. The endodontist. You have an endodontist, and you have a uh, um, um, what do you call it? Gum person is a. Um, Periodontist. periodontist and then you have your regular dentist that you go to uh and uh but i mean the fact was that it was one of those things that didn't cost a lot of money you know uh and um and nothing did you know do you know you what could buy you, a car for four grand you know, a nice one i know kids i'm getting to sound like get off my lawn but listen to me listen to me when i was a kid the cheapest thing you could do is if your dog got sick and you had to take him to the vet. And I always thought veterinarians were the most wonderful people in the world because they chose a profession that didn't pay a lot of money, but they did Close it because now. they loved animals. I talk to people who have pets and their pet gets sick, but um, right, you got insurance, right, Phil? Yeah, thanks to Rob telling me about it. Yeah, yeah. Healthy paws. Healthy paws. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love that. Healthy paws. That is almost as disgusting as the the uh, health plan or the uh, exercise plan for older people called silver sneakers. 
<laughs> I hate <laughs> that. Silver sneakers. Um, so, yeah. Healthy paws, P A U S E. P A U S E. P A U S E. Yeah. Because you pause to think about whether you're going to keep going or not. Yeah. yeah. Did somebody yell something out there? I said, I'm on that silver sneaker plane. Come on. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. What you boy? Three mm-hmm. mana. Nike or Adidas? <laughs> I used to go to those. But you know, well, sil- sil- I don't know why I haven't li- I don't like the term silver. I don't mind gray as much as silver. <clears throat> How about yeah. platinum? That's better. Yeah. Like I was st- thinking of starting a radical old people's group called the Gray Panthers or something. You know. I, it's been started. It has it been started? Yeah. Hmm. But anyway, so I, uh, who knows, you know, so, and I haven't eaten today because she said, don't bite down on that side for a couple hours or don't do hot and cold in your mouth and uh, for, for hours. So I'm afraid to eat anything. But if you do the hot and the cold, you'll find out very quickly whether or not the, uh, <laughs> you have pain and you need a root canal. Well, I, I so far I'm not the the, the Novocaine is worn off and I don't feel anything. But she said it could be 24 to 48 hours. So we'll we'll just keep our fingers crossed, you know. But I I I didn't I, she didn't say to me, you know, if you have to come back in and get the uh, th- thing, then I won't charge you for this appointment. You know, that would be the nice thing to do. All right. To say we did this because this is stopgap, but if it doesn't work, there yeah, should be some. Yeah, we should have some kind of warranty on dental work, you know, some kind of. Well, she was just taking a shot, you know. Uh, if it works, it works, and you you took the gamble. You could have said, "Hey, just do the root no, canal." No, she and had me. She had me opened up before she said, "You know, there's a fifty-fifty chance this will work." Yeah. You know, yeah. I was. It might. I wasn't going home with the with the. Uh, the thing she had put in before, which now it's it's metal. Last time it was like plastic or something like that that she put in there. Uh, she so, probably didn't know how deep she had to go until she got in there. Yeah, but I mean, once we go in there, you know, if it if it has to be, if we have to do like a, a root canal, which is her partner does that, then uh, she should say to me, oh, "Look, we'll we'll forget about this charge." Well, at least you church. got a, a metal or a, a plastic. Bree got some bubble gum stuffed on top of his uh, root canal. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Did you get a root well, canal? No, I'm not getting a root canal. No, he's not. And <clears throat> mine was able to tell me, Alex. She, you know, she said we're not going to do She took x-rays and said we're not going to do the root canal. But mm-hmm. I was the same way when they took the x-rays. The dental assistant mm-hmm. put the thing in my mouth wrong and the bottom you know the bottom of your mouth is very sensitive yeah and and then i don't know s- what they do it, well, I, they, they, they go to school for that like how to put it in wrong so that you're in great pain you know mm-hmm. that that's the kind of thing see this is what i'm saying is you get somebody like i'm not skitterish about going to the dentist okay just fucking do what you gotta I do i am well, no, it used to be that they gave me gas, and I didn't give a shit what you do to me. You could pull every tooth out of my mouth, and then I would uh, thank you afterwards. Uh, but, I mean, I found that, it, for me, I'll tell you what I was doing. I was doing the radio show, and I was doing a television show special. And between the two, I was maybe uh, working 18 hours a day, okay? And so when I had a dental appointment... I went, thank God, I've got like an hour where they're going to put me out with the gas and I can rest, you know? So I looked forward to dental appointments. Isn't that what happened with Michael Jackson? No, no, that was propofol. This is... He uh, said he couldn't sleep. That's why they gave him the propofol. This is nitrous oxide. But he wanted a break. Yeah, well, I mean, the trouble, the propofol was a stupid idea on his part, obviously. Mm. Uh, and the doctors, but he didn't have to did be. You, didn't see that movie Neverland, Leaving Neverland, or something? You know, it's just it, no. I haven't seen it, and the only people who've seen it went to there were the people at the uh, at the film festival, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But supposedly it uh, it makes quite a case for the fact that he was diddling young boys, you know, which we all yeah. knew, you know, and we kind of like uh, we get ah, that's Michael. Okay. Michael yeah. Jackson moved to Dubai for a few years. 
Did yeah. me? Did? Did? No, I yeah. don't. No, it wasn't Dubai. Yeah, I remember. No, it he... wasn't Dubai, Phil. It was uh, what's that place? It's in. It's further into Asia. I, I know uh, he did go there though, but it wasn't Dubai. Wasn't Dubai? No. Uh, Maybe Bahrain or Qatar. I don't know. No, it yeah, wasn't. I it wasn't it was Dubai. No, it, it it's it's like an island, I think. An island. Oh, kingdom. Bahrain. Bahrain, I think. You might be right. Yeah. yeah. Not the Maldives. That is a, no, 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 that's an actual. No, no. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll see. Yeah, he was Michael. in Bahrain oh, in 2005. Really? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. It was one of the places okay, he went because the guy took care of him because he really didn't have a lot of money. You know, he was kind of out of it. So Running out. Here, let me, let me put our... There we go, our GabNet logo there, so everybody can. It, it can be really obnoxious now, um, but uh, you know. So anyway, I just you know, I mean, I was so depressed, and I was so I I just I just went I. I'd be happy if I died tomorrow, you know, that I don't have to worry about. Always this, always when you're getting older, about worrying about money. And it, it, you're worrying about money. I've got enough money. If I go at the rate that I have been going for the last five years, uh, over the last five years, I maybe spent 30000 out of my savings. And if that happens, I can probably live another 20 years on what I have left. And yet I'm sitting here worrying about every penny. Because you, here's the problem. At my age, you don't know how long you're going to live. It was Bahrain. Yeah, and if if I knew if I knew how long I was going to live, then I would spend appro appropriately, right? But I don't, and so you know, I mean, yeah, I've got enough to keep me going for the next, you know, uh, twenty years. But and I I'm not going to keep going for the next twenty years. But still, the idea of putting out that kind of money for th this kind of stuff, you know, it's I don't know. I, based on my savings, I'm going to have to practice this. Welcome to Walmart. <laughs> well, you know, at least I have some savings, you know, and we also do have the condo well, and things like that. So quite frankly, if we wanted to, we could continue living okay. And plus, we're going to get some kind of settlement here for this deal. So I hope so. You know, so, uh, but I just, you know. That's why I became a professor. Yeah, because I can pretty much teach, you know, in, for a long time. Yeah, I can, you know, just sit down in the front. I knew that I don't know when I was in radio and in music, I, it just always seemed like the younger you were, the better off you'd be. Uh, because unless you were a really big name, yeah. uh, the odds of being able to stick around kind of went down as you got older. Yeah. Uh, Jeff had his hand up, Jeff. Oh yeah, I was going to say that uh, my my attitude is a little different than yours, Alex. Yeah. yeah, and and that is because a lot of my my brother in laws died very healthy, very younger. Yeah. Than expected. Yeah. And I'm saying, screw that! I'm not going to wait for going on vacation or do yeah. other things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've got the money to do it, so I may as well do it. You know, who knows how? I'm, uh, be a hell to lie there on my deathbed and say, "Hey, I managed to keep most of my money." Uh, you know, I mean, I don't have any reason to keep it. Did, Plus, Alex, did that you get crown. through SAG after a long-term care insurance? No, Marjorie. Now that is a rook. That is a real yeah. rook. Yeah, Marjorie. I'm thinking about getting that. Uh, Marjorie got long-term. Well, it's going to cost you a lot of money. At your uh, I have a group deal through my group. Well, here's the long-term thing. She she pays, I can't remember how much it is, a month or a year or whatever, but she paid, she'd she been paying it for years now. And she thought about it and went, you know, if you suddenly decide you don't want it anymore, it's not like you suddenly get all that money back or some <laughs> portion of it. You know, it's not like life insurance and you cash yeah. it in. Uh, no, you, you, goodbye. See you later. If you, if you miss, a, if you miss a payment, forget it, you know? And, uh, she called my business manager and she said, what do I do about this? And he said, well, you, I would have told you never to get into it to begin with. You know, I'll tell you a piece of advice he gave me today. I got this, uh, I, I, I got this, um, uh, uh, Mac pro, uh, 
off of eBay. Uh, it was still very expensive off of eBay. It was like thirty three hundred bucks. It's a it's a it's a, about a seven thousand dollar machine. So anyway, um, they do offer warranty. Mm. Uh, if you want it, you have to get it within thirty days of buying the item. Uh, but don't put don't keep putting up pictures because that's kind of like. Uh, unless it's really important, germane to the conversation, because it's his, he was in a dental chair. Oh, I, that's yeah. him in a dental chair. Let's see you in a yeah. dental chair. Hold on. That was that was when I was getting my tooth uh, worked on. Yeah. And uh, I had many moments when she was the dental assistant would left the room and she left the room, and I was by myself. So I took. Oh, okay. Took the photos. Yeah. So Here, here's one where. She lost part of, you can see here that this, there's one tool there that doesn't have its ending because yeah. it was missing something or it wasn't yeah. working. And she tried to borrow it from the other dentist, but it didn't fit hers. That looks and like that, the same. That didn't make me yeah, feel good. That looks like the same chair my, uh, my uh, woman has, my uh, dentist has. Yeah. Wow. Uh, okay. And anyway, that chair, don't they put a sponge on your head and then they put this crown over it? And they strap you to the yeah, uh, thing right. before they pull the switch. Right. Anyway, so <laughs> electric anyway, chair. to get back to what I was saying about warranties. Yeah. So uh, they, they you know, for I get a three-year warranty on this thing for $400. All right. So I call my business manager, and here's the problem with it. If it goes bad, it's not like I can take it down to Apple or I can take it to a local uh, fix-it shop to take care of it. To fix it i have to pack it up and send it to california by fedex ground which takes four days and then they work on it and then they send it back to me fedex ground four days uh for that kind of money for a warranty i want something just a little bit more expeditious you know what i'm saying Nothing goes wrong with something that's been in use for, you know, oh, over well, six months. This Mac Pro that's sitting here has been going on and off for the last eight years. Yeah. So am I to think that this new Mac Pro, this trash can, isn't it? I've, I've never heard of them going bad. Have you? Yeah. No, they're, they're such high Knock quality. They don't go bad. Yeah. And if it does, it does. You know, but uh, uh, so it, my business manager said, listen, never buy warranties. The only thing that we agreed probably you should buy a warranty on is a laptop. And the reason is, is because they're moved around a lot. You know, they're moved from place to place and, and, and they're not stable. But if you get a Mac Pro like this one, you know, I mean, I got their Apple Care. I think it was 150 bucks or something. But uh, it uh, this thing has just gone forever, you know. And the other one I have in the other room still works. The one that's like, uh, I'd say it's 12 years old. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you, so he said, don't get the warranty. Yeah, although this is a lot more miniaturized than your older ones. You know, the, the older ones had a case this big. It had plenty of air flowing uh, through it, and well, they, uh, they the were, components were larger. You know, were, it wasn't they, as miniaturized. They were big behemoths, basically. Yeah. You know, they were behemoths. And, uh, uh, you already have a peanut butter bar on your shopping list. Would you still like to add peanut oh, butter Oh, sorry, bars? sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa? Alexa, uh, Echo, Alexa, she, she, uh, buy a Rolls Royce. <laughs> What's on my shopping list? She just comes on, you know, sometimes. <laughs> she laughs uh, by herself sometimes, too. Mm -hmm. I finally broke down and bought one. What? Uh, iPhone? The 10. The 10, the X. Yeah. Basically, that's all you can buy these days now. The excess, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the is this the this is the the ears is the middle one. Yeah, the excess because they have the R, and I think they then have the you know the XS and then the X uh, Max or whatever it is, the oh. big one. I got the first one, the 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 one that that's you know, what the I that's what I've got generation. That's what I've got. Yeah, it's it's the yeah. smaller one, but it's the 
the good camera, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Do you want? Do you really want to pay extra money to get the Max? I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, because I had the uh, 6S and it was big, and it's it was nice. Big. You could see it, but it was hard to handle for me. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't put it in your pocket. Uh, you know, it was too big. You couldn't put it in your cup holder. Yeah, I big. can't reach across it with my thumb and all that. Gee, yeah. every other tooth but that one is bothering me tonight, except the one that's supposed to go bad. So, <laughs> who knows? Um, did it happen due to the fall? No, no. Oh. It was a, it was a it was a um, uh, filling that came was getting loose, and oh. um, uh, she even had trouble getting it out. But it was it was loose. She agreed it was loose. You know, he's got his hand in it. it and it was seven yeah, years Alex, old. What? These are, it's like a domino effect sometimes or a penguin effect. You know, you get one tooth that goes bad and then they fix that mm -hmm. and it caused the other one. That's what happened with mine. <clears throat> really? I never had that happen. Oh, it's, it's like one but, after but I'll another. But I'll tell you why I don't like root canals. I'll tell you what's wrong with root canals. Uh, I've had several root canals in my mouth go bad and have to put implants in, have the tooth pulled and put implants in. This loose tooth I've had for a long time here on this side uh, was is is a is a root canal, uh, and you know they don't last forever, and fillings are only good for she said seven to ten years, or the yeah. the kind of plastic compound that I had. Sensodyne, yeah, that's that's uh, that's that's a good thing to use. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's just good toothpaste. Period. You know. Well, it numbs the 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 area. It doesn't that, really numb it. It, it, it just it, mildly takes care of it. You know. Coats it somehow with something that uh, keeps it from uh, being yeah. as painful. Now, the latest thing that I got was I uh, talking to my uh, my pharmacy. Uh, all your drugs that you have, the prices are going up. This is the time every year they raise the prices on their drugs. Um. How long does that keep happening? You know? Forever. When it comes to medicine, when it comes to dental, when it comes to all of that, we spend a fortune. You know? And uh, they're charging a fortune. And they just should be some, this, this should be put to a stop. I mean, I don't, Phil, Phil, you would disagree with uh, universal health care, but I got to tell you, these people are asking for it. You know? Yeah. Well, well, uh, wait a minute. well let, let Charlie be careful what you wish. Let Charlie. For, let Charlie. You get it. Let Charlie. He was going to oh. say saying something there. Well, no, I just said they're abusing us. Uh, they're overcharging us. We we pay far more for all those drugs for for health care for dental care than any other country in the world practically. Yeah. Well, witness uh, Bree, who's paying less for dentistry than we are here. Ocasio Cortez uh, the other day said that she wanted to eliminate insurance. Uh, and, me too. Uh, well, I agree. Wrong. I agree with it. it. Let me let me say this, Phil, and she has a very good point, and here's why it's a good point. Up until a few years ago, insurance companies were not allowed to be profit making organizations. They were nonprofits and by law, and they and that's why the prices were were low. When they became profit making, all of a sudden, th they open up the barn door. Okay, so you know that's why you're seeing such high insurance costs now. Did you hear uh, any of the interviews today with uh, Schultz from uh, Starbucks? I don't like him. No, no, I actually thought he was. He made a lot of sense. I don't like yeah, him. Well, you Republicans well, will. Well, you're the same idiot who voted for Perot and thinks Trump's a good idea. You know, you yeah. like guys who have money. They seem no, to, not necessarily. They, well, they but, seem to get uh, you. They seem to get your mantle of authority. You know. Well, uh, it, it isn't the money. You know, the guy wants to be an independent and to, to begin uh, with, wants I, to I, unite. I, I listened to him today, and he's ter yeah. he's terrible. He's just you terrible. So? What, what? Any of you people hear him? No, I, just I snippets. Have. Might have been I on CBS. I think he was interviewed by Hoda somebody. On CBS, he was interviewed on 60 Minutes on Sunday. Yeah, 60 Minutes. Oh, yeah. Well, they, yeah. they had him and on I, CBS. And I, and I think he's an asshole because he consider, considers himself a liberal. 
And so he's going to go and run as an independent and probably take votes away from Democrats, you know, and and, and literally and literally guarantee Trump the White House. And it's not he really shouldn't do that. You know, not not if you if you consider yourself a real liberal and you don't like what Trump is doing, you don't become the spoiler. I mean, right? Yeah. Well, uh, it worked for Anderson. Huh? Anderson and uh, was a spoiler. Perot was uh, a spoiler. Sp- uh, Perot as well for Bush. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, so I mean, yeah, unfortunately, the third party has no power yet. Unfortunately, well, it yep. it and it probably never will. You know, and that's could, unfortunate as well. It could. Why, be, why does he want to run as an independent? Uh, I, that, that I don't know. I mean, what do you think, Josh? You've been quiet tonight. What do you have you seen anything with Howard Schultz and listened to him at all? Uh, you're muted, uh, Josh. There we go. Uh, now I, I really don't know anything about him. I mean, not that, not that much. Uh, I, I don't really want anyone who's been a CEO of anything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If anything, I think we've learned that for as much distaste as some people might have for professional politicians, they are professional politicians, and people who are professionals at their job, whether you like them or not, are sometimes good at their job. Yeah. For instance, we don't all like the dentist, or we don't all like the lawyer, we don't all like the bank. professional at what they do. I mean, I think we've seen what happens when someone who was the CEO of something or whatever starts running the show the way they... I mean, it's just it's fucking amateur hours, which is what we have now. I mean, I, I don't want anyone who was the CEO of anything. Find someone who knows about government, yeah. you know? Yep. Yeah. Not about fucking $9 coffee, which, I mean, he's getting a fucking break. <laughs> Nine dollar coffee. If you vote for him, you get a vente coffee with a double pump of caramel. <laughs> you know, it's a shit. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, latte. Uh, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think that we should start learning that politicians aren't the worst thing possible. The worst thing possible is somebody who tries to run this country and doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Jeff. Yeah, I, I heard a little bit that he he was uh, speaking. Uh, a couple of days ago, and he says that the reason he wants to become independent is that he can't quite trust the Democrats or the Republicans because they don't really work very hard and they don't communicate very well and they really haven't solved any problems. He And he felt like independent, he can make the right decisions. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what he. That's what the guy said. Well, I mean, I just don't see. I don't buy into that because I believe that political parties have created a lot of problems. But I believe political parties have solved a lot of problems. Certain political parties solve problems like slavery and civil rights and the greatest economic depression to, you know, ever strike the modern world. I mean, it's not the political party; it's the damn people that you currently have constituting the political parties. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, but you- I don't blame the, the apparatus, RNC. I blame the people. You look at the well, RNC and the DNC, the fix is always in. You know, they're not fair. Uh, now, I, I don't I don't like Bernie Sanders. I think he's, you know, he's terrible. But, you know, uh, he did get a raw deal from the DNC. You know, uh, they they made sure that there was no way he could uh, he could be the nominee. So you said you He's, he's independent. Keep, I'm going to go take a, go out no, for just a second. Just keep talking to each other. Okay. Yeah, he's independent now. The, uh, but uh, didn't they do that stuff with the super delegates? Yeah. Yeah, they did it. Yeah. And my my mother, when she moved to this place in Georgia, she says, "Oh, it's really nice here. They have a super Kmart." <laughs> I always thought the super delegates and the super Kmart's had a, had a lot in common. <laughs> but, right. So, what did you say about Gabbard? Well, yeah. Look, uh, I was just reading a lot about her. That uh, she seems to be uh, along the the Bernie lines. 
Uh, I went to the Japanese consul last night for the Japanese New Year celebration. Huh. And it was pretty nice. Um, but I don't know, you know, they, uh, they didn't have as much food as I thought they would have. Like, everybody was pigging out. And I guess I was a little too slow. Wow. I didn't get enough to... Uh, they have sushi or... Uh... Yeah, they had sushi, sashimi. They, had, they flew in a chef, for, a sushi chef from Japan for like 24 hours just so he could, you know, make the sushi. Wow. And I think I have his picture How here. How do we... Somewhere. I went out for a second and when I come back, we're not talking about <laughs> Howard Schultz anymore. We're talking about sushi. Uh, he, uh, Bree was at the uh, I Japanese went to consulate, the consulate last, night. last night. I was invited there by the ambassador. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, I got a poor connection. Hmm. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was really nice. I got a whole bag of uh, matcha. What's matcha? Oh, it's like matcha is to green tea what like dark chocolate is to regular chocolate. It's just like intense green tea. Mm -hmm. And I make matcha lattes. Uh, you know, in the afternoon, they're really good. But yeah, I didn't know have those at Starbucks. No, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. In, in Japan, they have it. In Singapore, they have it. Here in Dubai, they don't. But I can go to Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons has wonderful chais, including matcha lattes. They have a Tim Hortons in Dubai? Yes, wow. we, we have every chain, every chain and every retail store around the world is in Dubai. So I eat lunch sometimes at fast food, New Zealand fast food places, and I'll get a, a matcha latte from the Canadian Tim Hortons, and then I'll have, uh, you know, I'll have uh, sushi from a Japanese fast food place. So anything that's been chained or, you know, that is has a brand name that, that – exists somewhere they usually have a dubai outlet oh. so you name it i've seen it doesn't surprise me hmm. wow all right so where were we kangaroo oh, yeah, yeah. alex i've told you before we have italy we have italy here oh really you yeah <laughs> and we have serendipity and we have magnolia bakery i'll, I'll be back in a moment <laughs> <laughs> we'll be in another country <laughs> So, I mean, you name it, we have it. If it's a chain that you know and that you like and it's somewhat successful, then it's in Dubai. Uh, Bree, your camera is aiming at a picture of a hot woman on a set of shelves. Uh, who is she? No, I, I think that that is, that is an old, one of the first Internet radios that was ever made. It's a Torian infusion. And no, no, no. The There's a picture of a woman on the uh, in the uh, bin. Yeah, uh, next yeah, to the plastic that's bins. Thing. That's on. The, it's on the side of a box yeah. that holds the world's first portable internet radio. That was back in I don't know, like 20 years ago. Excuse or something. me, folks. I'm sorry I took some little time out there, but I uh, had a. Uh, it was feeling like that the filling was loose, but it turns out it wasn't. It's just. My mouth. Is, what do you my, want for four hundred and seventy-five? My mouth. My <laughs> mouth is now getting sensitive, but the the filling is in there firmly, so I wanted to make sure of that. But uh, yeah, you start to your tongue starts to second guess what your mouth was like. Yeah. After yeah. You know, before and after dentistry. Well, I have to go back on uh, on Thursday, but I might not. I have to Me do it too. on Friday because of the, how cold it's going to be. But they, uh, she's got to burnish it down because it's a little rough around the edges and stuff. So. But she couldn't do it today because it would have ruined the filling or something. I don't know. You, you just don't. I don't understand how they stick a piece of metal in your mouth and it stays there for twenty years. That I don't understand. That one makes no sense to me. Yeah. Should last longer. No, I mean, but why? I have I have fillings in my mouth probably have been there for longer than twenty years. I mean, you know, but they take a yeah. Uh, they, she must know what she's doing. They don't fall out, you know. So, well, when my crown came out, the gold crown, with you know, when they were doing the other one, yeah. Uh, and I said, I said, oh, I had that done in 1997, uh -huh. and they both let out a, a, collef a collective gasp. They were like, oh yeah, that's really old, and it should. I'm like, well, what do you mean? It should last forever, in my opinion. I mean, why does it come out? You know, that won't pay your boat payment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's one of the things, like, one dentist, I had a Colombian 
uh, who was trained in Germany, she and she did emergency work on the upper one. She said, do an, an inlay, and it, she didn't. She said, keep the tooth as long as you can. But then the the Indian woman said, no, there's micro fractures. It's not going to last. Let's do the crown. And I'm like, you know, a crown is more expensive. So I always second guess. Like, are they? Is she really saying that because it's really what's better, best for my tooth, or because it costs more? You know, I don't know. You know what happened once? I this is I think uh, I've never told the story here, but I told it when it happened to me uh, when I was at Sirius. <clears throat> I had this tooth that had been loose, and I called it my loose tooth. It had been getting looser and looser by the by the year, and uh, they kept saying, "Hey, we should pull that, we should pull that." No, no, let's keep the tooth. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. I kept hanging onto this tooth, and it got looser and looser and looser. All of a sudden, one day, I felt going to my mouth because I feel something is fallen off and I pull something out and I go oh oh it's where that loose tooth was this is the crown so I went to the dentist the next day and I said the crown fell off I need to have it put back on and she says that's not the crown that's your tooth fell apart I said no it it, it, it as they put it self extracted yeah wow that happened to me once yeah yeah, and I have another if, loose tooth if, here, if and I'm waiting for you. If you had a loose to... tooth all that time, mm -hmm. did you have bone damage? No. Well, if I did, uh, you know, they put a uh, what do you call it in there, a, a implant, and everything is fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't tell my implant teeth from my uh, other teeth. Well, I can. They seem to be a little smaller. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, and uh, the you know the expensive part about you do an implant, and you've spent thirty five hundred. Okay, good. Now you're through with that. Now, this is the best part about it. They have to put a crown on the implant. That's, that's, a, that's another $1,900. And it's more expensive. Oh, that's right. In case it, they have to go in. It's more. In, it's like it, a cap on a screwdriver, it, on the screw. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's more expensive than a normal crown mm -hmm. because it's a crown for an implant. And on top really? of that, when you get your implant, you also have to go get an MRI or CAT scan for your mouth, which they charge you 300 bucks so they can make sure they plant the thing right. Boy, I mean, by the time you're through, I mean, the one thing after another, after another, after another. So somewhere along the line, we got to do something about this. Universal what happened to the day when you got false teeth? And, and you took them out and you stuck them in a jar, you know? Yeah, well, you know. Like a bridge? Well, if, I, if this loose tooth falls out, I'm just leaving it out because it's all the way back here. Nobody's going to see it. And, oh, the, the you know, I don't want to... Well, does it, I don't, I don't does wanna, it affect the one above it? What do you mean the one above it? It's or below top. it? It's on top. No, it'd be, okay, would it affect, or the one it would below it. affect the ones to the side. No. I don't no. think no. I've ever no. But people, you ever notice people when they lose teeth back here never get them replaced? Because, yeah. you know, they, nobody ever sees them. They set an hour's window. You know, my business manager, who's got a decent amount of money, lost that tooth. He said, I just, I didn't even do anything for it. If I did something, what I would do is when I got my implants for the, for the six months or so while everything's healing and this and that and the other thing, they gave me another $750, a, uh, a, a, a fake tooth to just pop in. A temporary. Uh, it's not a temporary. It's a fake tooth. I'd get one of those instead of a real tooth because I told her, I said, you know, I would have just as much preferred having that in there as, as the implant because when I'd use it during the day, I didn't stop to think it was there, you know, and it just filled up that little gap in my mouth so I didn't look like I was uh, uh, from the Ozarks, Yeah, so... Well, we spent enough time talking about dentistry. What about Donald Trump today? Well, fuck him. Anyway, let's get on to other stuff. Actually, I haven't heard much about him at all. You know? Well, you, you got Roger Stone uh, pled not guilty. Uh, okay. Give me a and, call me call me an asshole, but there's something about Roger Stone I actually like. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, the the more prick. I hear him. The more I like him. No, he's you know, just he's a, a fighter. Prick. He's just such a prick. He's an ass. unadulterated an prick. Asshole. They yeah. didn't need to go in there with guns blazing. That was ridiculous. Well, they went uh, in with guns blazing. Yeah. They went in with that because they were afraid that if they didn't, he would destroy evidence. 
And and over the last two years, he didn't destroy anything. Well, <laughs> all, I know, all I know is I have a I have a feeling that he's not as guilty as everybody would like to think he is. What he's guilty of, are. what he's guilty of, is bragging about stuff that he didn't do, which looked like he was doing stuff illegally. Is he's you know, guilty of distraction? Yes. Now, what all yes, of these very guys good, are guilty Kevin. of? Wait a minute, very good, Kevin. Did you, hear, did, you hear, did you hear what Kevin said? Distraction. Uh, they're guilty of saying something <laughs> that gets said. refuted in some other way, and it's more a technical thing than anything else. Or, or uh, you know, they say, were you here on such and such a date? And the guy says, well, geez, uh, maybe, you know, no, I don't think so. And then they find out he was, and uh, all of a sudden that's lying to Congress, and that's enough to put the guy in jail. You know, he's done was, uh, he's done eight what eight or nine interviews over the last what two or three days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's loving everything. He's all over the place. Yes, well, he's got a couple of books for he's sale. He's got like fifteen costume changes. <laughs> they, they're already counting that shit. Yes, Bree. Well, to what Phil was saying about the getting people on technicalities, it was it was. I watched a documentary on uh, the men who invented radio, and one thing that stuck in my mind was. Edwin Howard Armstrong, the inventor of FM radio, had uh, a number of court cases against David Zarnoff, the you know the who controlled NBC RCA. Yeah. And <clears throat> one of the quotes that was attributed to Armstrong was something he said, something to the effect where lawyers substitute reality for words and then argue about the words, you know, uh, something to that effect. And and you're right, they, they they just at a certain point they get so far away from reality. Then they're just dealing with the technicalities, and you know, to a large extent, I think that's where we go here. The the, uh, the Trump will give a pardon, or this won't be as big as it's it's you know set out to be. Um, it looks like Miller is trying to build a case by, you know, taking out the henchmen. It's hard to imagine who would be larger than Stone, except maybe Manafort or Junior, and but I think that you know again. All of this plays into Trump's base because they see it as this is what all happens in D.C. You can't get anything done because everybody's always trying to sue everybody and, and have a special Minutia. prosecutor. And, 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 and essentially, they're right. Our system no longer functions. If you can't see that, then I don't know what to tell you because it's just all big theater and games and crap. And nothing gets nothing is really helping people, uh, and I don't know how we fix that, but you know maybe we go back to just the states run everything, but we don't have the leadership in all the states. It's so what do we do? But that's what but Schultz. Any, that's what any Schultz says he wants to fix. Yeah, but yeah, everybody says they want to fix something just because they say they want to fix something, and they identified a problem which we've all identified before. Doesn't mean he's going to be able to solve it. You know, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm sick and tired of these people who make statements about what they'll do if they get into office that are all things that we already have have have, have parsed and have seen. You know, and it's more of a clusterfuck yeah. now than it was two and a half, three years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and, if and of course, anybody's going to make it look better now. You know, I mean, to say, oh, we need something, do something about medical care in this country, blah blah blah. We've been saying that tonight, right? You know. Uh, uh, no big deal. Uh, did, it, Alex, it, you think that Kamala Harris did? Is she kind of like a Me Too who didn't say anything with Willie Brown? Did, I mean, I'm getting the impression that Willie Brown sort of directed her early career. Yes, he did. Um, he did. And and so things may have occurred there. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, because some women who would have spurned his advances would now be pointing back at him and saying what a terrible guy he is. Well, yeah, well he, we he was a kingmaker. Uh, uh, to begin with, very, uh, uh, okay, powerful. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the point is that maybe she really liked the guy. You know, yeah. what's to say right. that isn't so? You know, He was a pretty charming guy, right. yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, uh, it, you She's know. the Hillary Clinton. Well, I mean, come on. A, a years ago, uh, they were. Remember when they used to do sixty minutes? Uh, they used to do this point counterpoint. And I'm trying to remember the name of the guy. Uh, but, oh yeah, what the hell was his name? He, yeah, but he did my show, 
once, <clears throat> and I had to bleep him actually when he said. It was, no, I think and during a break, he said, "Down in Washington, we have these women who like to do nothing but have have relationships with politicians." And he mm -hmm. said, "We have a name for them." He said, "What is it?" He said, "Power, Power. fuckers." Uh, and, 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 and I don't want to say the name of this person that uh, you know, but didn't she say that that's why she liked the guy who was the New York City? Well, she was Bernard Carrick's girlfriend. Right. Yeah, I understand. I didn't want to. Uh, it was <clears throat> Judith Reagan. She's very happy to talk about it. Really? Uh, and I said, you know, one time we were walking down the street and I said this, uh, Judith, I, because I really like Judith. I, I, I found her hot and I found her smart and I found, found her just terrific. And yet she's the one who did things like uh, well, who, the book for uh, uh, Rush, Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh's book. Yeah. Anyway, uh, she, um, I said to her, I said, Bernard Carrick? I said, you, uh, I just can't imagine somebody as bright as you are even having something to do with him. And she looked at me with this really plaintive look on her face and said, hey, I like power. You know? Yeah. There's just something about yeah. power that's, that, that is very seductive for me. You and, know? and this is something we don't talk about now. I mean, women can be all powerful now because if they want to move ahead and accept the advances, then they get in those positions, and but if they don't, they can yeah. that now they can yell about it and claim, well, the guy did this and that. Yeah. How do you win? You know, because uh, it just seems impossible. And how do we know what's going on? That's the other side of it. If you're gonna, if you're going to neuter that situation, so to speak, and look at it fairly, you have to agree that it goes, it goes both ways. Yeah. And shouldn't we get away from from that as well? Uh, ideally, if that's the perfect yeah. world we're we're looking towards. Uh, rather than revenge against the way things have been, I don't know. And if Ka if Kamala Harris was a power fucker and she learned some lessons, then uh, okay, you know she's had a schooling a lot of people didn't have uh, a privy to. Uh, oh, you know, um, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama together. That's who it was James Kilpatrick. That's right. James Kilpatrick. No, yeah. was no, no. He was he did his own commentaries. This was the other guy. It was he was a guy that was she, count, point counterpoint. It, no point counterpoint was uh, later on, but originally. You mean the guy that went to start Slate Magazine? No. Kinsley. No, 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 no. no. I'm trying. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Let me look it up here. Oh, yeah, that's what I looked up. It's was. Uh, it, it wasn't J conservative columnist. No conservative columnist. James yeah, yeah, died in Sunday. Was the best but, known TV for yeah. one half of point counterpoint with, with Shane Alexander. <laughs> Shana, yeah, Shana Alexander. Alexander. But before that, there was another guy who did it with her, and they, yeah, they didn't like I her. Because, remember somebody before that too, because he he made problems. So you know, well, these, you know that there was a there were women in mu the music industry as well. Who you know who will Jane, you ignorant slut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sleep with the band, you know, sweet Jane. Uh, Shana Alexander and uh, I can't remember the guy's name now. I think he's dead. He was a he was a writer, and uh, well, Patrick's dead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kilpatrick is long dead, and I think she's dead too, isn't she? Yeah. Yes, kids. Once again, we're saying throwing out some names here you never heard in your life. <laughs> there are no kids. Uh, yeah, yeah. No <laughs> kids listening to this. You know. Uh, uh, Who was it? No, it wasn't William F. Buckley. No, 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 no. Oh God, what was his name? That was driving me nuts because I, I thought there was another one, but that might be the only one. No. Oops. Counter. Point. Okay. Point. Counterpoint. Um. Originally published in. Let's see. Point. Counterpoint. Point. Counterpoint. Uh, Wikipedia. You're not saying? thinking of that show uh, where the guy at the end would go bye bye. No, uh, no, 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 it's not. Point counterpoint. Wait a minute. Point counterpoint. Uh, Sixty minutes. All right, Alex. I got to bug out because I got to run over to the office. Oh. I'm running a little late. Okay. Well, then so you're never going to find out. Take care. And I start a new job tomorrow morning, so I won't be able to participate in Jack's program. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, uh, where's Patrick been? He hasn't been. He's around. been on. He's been active on Facebook, but he hasn't been. 
Oh, it's man. so cold in Wisconsin, yeah. he can't move to get to the computer. The wheels on his wheelchair have frozen in place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, Has he been know? on the last few days? No. Uh, I, I just sent him a message a little bit ago, but he hadn't sent me anything back yet, so... I thought maybe you, he was. Did you uh, hear about that woman in Wisconsin that uh, they found dead under her car? She had frozen to death. I guess somebody had attacked her, and and uh, she she uh, ended up uh, under her car, and they she was stuck to the pavement. It was, pavement. It was so cold, frozen wow. to death. Uh, yeah, that's like that here. It's like the temperature outside here where I live is like five or six below right now. It's supposed to be even colder than that tomorrow. And, the what wind, about Chicago? The wind is like the high miles tomorrow miles. in Chicago is supposed to be negative thirteen. Well, yeah, so and, and I not... think the wind chill is negative sixty. Right. I mean, it's uh, it's and terrible. Negative forty, yeah. It's terrible. There's supposed to be like an 80, 89 differential between now and Friday when wow. it warms up, <laughs> and it's going to rain Sunday. So I don't know what that's going to do. Uh, well, they're playing in Atlanta. Atlanta is not that cold. Uh, well, no. it's, it's it's in a dome. Nick, yeah, um, okay, I just found it. Found it. Found it. Nicholas Von yeah. Hoffman. He did it oh. from 1971 to 1974. Didn't he invent the V2 rocket? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Von Hoffman uh, did uh, did point counterpoint before James Kilpatrick. Oh, uh, okay. And Shane when Alexander Greece... died in 2005. What? Uh. When Bree said that this guy Anderson invented FM radio, I knew he was wrong. No, you invented FM Armstrong. radio. No, <laughs> no oh, it was shit. a guy by the name of Howard Armstrong, was it? And he uh, not only invented FM, uh, but he also and the uh, podcast. He also came up with a much better version of the vacuum tube, uh, and uh, and it gave uh, for DeForest Kelly was it. Uh, DeForest Kelly. Well, DeForest Kelly was yeah, the, the, on... Uh, Lita Forrest. Uh, Lita Forrest. Uh, uh, Lita Forrest, a, a run TV for his show. money. Uh, Lita Forrest invented the vacuum tube, uh -huh. uh, which made amplification. But but uh, Ali, uh, Armstrong came out with a much better tube and, and, and actually came up with the best audio system for movies. Um, so, uh, you know. But did, anyway. did he did he commit suicide? Is he the one that committed suicide because he didn't get credit for the invention of the FM radio at the time, or am I, I thinking of somebody well, else? Well, how what is it? Was it, he say the name was Howard Armstrong? Was it? I think yeah, so. I can't remember. I thought the person that invented FM radio got ripped off by RCA and and didn't get credit. But uh, I mean, I don't know. I could be maybe well, RCA right. was the TV, right? Yeah, uh, well, was well, well, we're, we're, that was in in. Uh, in, in, in in your, uh, uh, oh, no, that's that's Howard Armstrong, the musician. We don't want that. Edwin Howard Armstrong. I just thought they basically like stole his technology after he tried to sell it to him or something like that. I, I, I just couldn't remember right. Maybe it, it was one thing where it was like a drum and a, and ah bitter you know. bitter and overtaxed by years of litigation and mounting financial problems. Armstrong lashed out at his wife one day with a fireplace poker striking her in the arm. She left the apartment to stay with her sister. Uh, sometime during the night of January 31st to February 1st, with his wife in Connecticut and three servants having left for the day, Armstrong removed the condi air conditioner from the window of his yeah, jumped out, apartment right? and jumped out of the apartment. Yeah, that's building. what I thought. Yeah, we're coming up on the anniversary there. Wow. Uh, on the 13th Avenue, do you say? Yeah, no, because no, I thought 13th they, floor, uh, Riverside, uh, River House uh, in Manhattan. 116th. No. He had tried to sell them the technology or whatever, and, you know, they were interested, and then the next thing you know, they, they like, just made it without his permission. Yeah, his, or... suits, his suits went on for years. Thunk. Right. Yeah. The, you know, there were other things like that. The guy who invented the uh, intermittent windshield wiper. Right, yeah. Was, that they made guy a movie got ripped about off, that. too. Yeah. Pardon me? Oh. Yeah, they made a movie about that one, right? Yeah, like he tried to yeah, commit, I think so. he tried to commit suicide, but unfortunately, every time he tried, he started, he stopped, he started, he stopped. <laughs> right. <laughs> Waited five seconds, started again, <laughs> and then he got a squirt of water. <laughs> but that's a that's a. I, you, I'm glad somebody brought up Armstrong because he's one of the greats in electrical engineering. 
uh, and uh, and then you had what's his name, the guy who invented television. It took him forever to get people to admit that he actually invented television. Uh, I'm trying Were to there two kinds of television? Uh, no, or two? No, two kinds of color TV. Color TV. Okay. Yeah. There was the CBS version, and there was the Sarnoff version. The CBS one got approved. But then two years later, the FCC pulled their approval and gave it to RCA because RCA started spreading rumors that because there was a wheel involved in the color television set with CBS, that the wheels had come loose in some situations and decapitated people. <laughs> it wasn't true, and, but and Sarnoff... There was hamsters that came with each wheel. Yeah. Uh, it was not a great idea, but supposedly the color was phenomenal. It was just phenomenal. Really? Yeah. yeah. A lot of reds. <laughs> no, a lot of reds, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm just, just curious about something since you only had a couple minutes left, but you made a joke earlier about uh, your teeth and looking like you were from the Ozarks. So yeah. I just wanted to know, because I'm, I'm sure you probably do, did, do you watch that show on Netflix, The uh, Ozarks? with? Uh, I watched the first uh, uh, season. I didn't Jason watch Bateman or whatever? Didn't watch the second season. It didn't keep me interested. Really? I, I thought it was pretty good. I was just curious, but... Because, uh, uh, I mean, he normally just does, like, comedy or whatever, you know, yeah, typically. And then yeah. he did, like, a, a serious role. I actually thought he... he yeah, well, he won, he won uh, the SAG Award. Right. For best Actor in a, in a Drama Series. Uh, the, the awards were this weekend. I didn't even mention them because I was so disappointed in the way my people voted. I mean, yeah. giving that guy, Rami Malek, uh, an award for that job, for that ch picture, Bohemian Rhapsody, is a... Is a uh, it's uh, terrible. Maisel, uh, Maisel got. Uh, an, it won an award. everything. Yeah. It won everything for television. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I saw what's his name, the comedian. Uh, I, and I just Ke I Kevin drew a Pollack. Blank. Who? Kevin Pollack. Pollack. Yeah, Kevin yeah. Pollack. Yeah, he was up there. I, I'm very happy for him. He yeah, but he, he won nice as guy. part of the cast. He didn't win an individual award. No, I, I understand, but that's that's okay. But, yeah, well, it's not okay. <laughs> Because I won, I, I I have two two Emmys, and one of them is uh, is for performance by a, a a person on a show, and that one I like. The other one is a cumulative award for mm -hmm. best uh, I don't know show or something like that. So uh, I didn't feel that I truly got that was my sports one, by the way. So you're not that, a that team was my player. That was that my what that was us. my sports Emmy was a cumulative yeah. Emmy. There were a bunch of us that were put in for the Emmy for that show, and that show won, so I got an Emmy. Well, it just means you play well with others, uh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? In that kindergarten, that would have been a, a real plus. It simply meant that I was in the right place at the right time. Yes. You know? Uh, hmm. But it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's somewhat interesting, I guess. I, uh, eh. So anyway... Uh, what? Patrick said he should probably be on tomorrow. Oh, okay. I just want. He to... has uh, another dead body to stuff under a car, but it's, yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and and Busy. that's hard to do with yeah. a wheelchair. Oh yeah, I was gonna tell everybody. What? I, I used to live in Wisconsin. Yeah. When it got to be so cold, and on Friday nights we would play cards at somebody's house, and it was so cold the 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 cars wouldn't start so what we would do take the batteries and bring them in the house to oh, keep them warm. i used people to have I, blankets I, I, I lived in minneapolis i lived in minneapolis and i used to go out during a commercial break 30 minutes before i had to leave to start the car so when i got into it i the, the car was warm oh, man. oh the, the winters in that part of the country i don't know why anybody oh, lives up there but they must be for the hunting anyway thanks jeff <laughs> thanks charlie uh, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Brian. And of, of course, always uh, a big thank you to uh, our, uh, our our member of the Supreme Court eventually, Josh Wheeler. Uh, and also uh, thank you to, to Bree for calling as well. Uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, I think it might be a nice thing if you would all wave goodbye to the people out there. Okay. And I'll wave goodbye to them myself. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Let me get rid of them. Let me unceremoniously, let me drop them, take myself offline, okay, and then uh, disconnect all the calls. There we go. That means that the next show with Jack Bishop, The Intersection, 
will have a bunch of clear lines. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. So let me just close the whole thing off by saying we'll be back again tomorrow night. At, there's the uh, franchise MC with the arena at 8.30 Eastern time. Then at 9.30, it's Damien Chaplin, Chaplin and the, ex- the exchange. And then tomorrow night at 10 o'clock Eastern time, same time, same station in life. I'll be back here. And in the meantime, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>